Well, to another battle over spending cuts that's gone all the way to the High Court. In what's being seen as a legal test case, campaigners in Gloucestershire won an injunction, stopping the council from going ahead with planned library closures. If it's upheld as a hearing this week, there'll be a full judicial review of the council's plans. And as Casey Razzle reports, it's become a fight for the hearts and minds of the reading public. Welcome to the front line of protest. The leafy lanes of Gloucestershire now engaged in battle. They're fighting for the survival of their community, they say, with every weapon they have. This, the trophy, the county's library service. It just seems inconceivable that uh, a place the size of Letchlade can be without a county-operated library. It is, it is quite inconceivable and, and, and something that we will fight for as long and as hard as we can. Amongst the troops, a retired clergyman, an octogenarian book reviewer, a town councillor, a member of the Women's Institute, the heart of radicalism beating loudly here. For the Friends of Gloucestershire Libraries have just made history. Last week, for the first time ever, the High Court ordered an injunction to stop library cuts, and it had Gloucestershire in its sights. Although we're disappointed that it's been necessary to take the county to court, frankly, we're delighted that the injunction has been granted because we think this will give an opportunity for the democratic process to, to be managed by the court that we haven't been able to manage ourselves locally. Letchlade, one of ten the council plans to close. That's almost a quarter of the county's libraries. It needs to save £114 million. Despite Gloucestershire's often picturesque locations, more than half the council's budget goes on social services. Those need protecting, it argues. Good morning. What a the last one, what a... We have to wait and see, I think. The council wants to save £2 million on libraries by getting community groups to run some of them, by cutting opening hours and by closing all its mobile services. These loan around 100,000 books a year to the likes of Tony Parker, who's been borrowing here since 1969. Because I've got no car and I only use the bus twice a week and I'd have to make a special journey if we went into town to the library in town because I couldn't carry the books and the groceries. So the Cotswolds now leading the charge against library cuts. The council retorting this is about big society, empowering local groups to take over. You've got a situation where communities are now coming forward and saying we can run these libraries in a different way, so why shouldn't we take that opportunity to deliver that service in a different way and help to maintain funding for the most vulnerable in our communities? We are not professional librarians. We Those don't manning the barricades say they were given an ultimatum. Take over your library or it will close. They called in the big legal guns. The council is in clear breach of its statutory duties and in clear breach of its legal obligations. And that's why court action is so effective. And that's why we've been able to obtain an interim injunction which prevents the council from taking further steps at present until this matter is looked at by the court. So are they on the road to victory or is this just an expensive delay? A bucolic battleground being watched by campaigners across the country. The case is back in court next week. Casey Razzle, well, it's not just library closures or disability benefits as the cuts kick in. The law is increasingly being used on a number of fronts to challenge government and local authority proposals. Earlier today, I spoke to the human rights lawyer Phil Shiner, who's involved in handling the Gloucestershire Libraries case and a series of others. I asked him if the courts are now the way forward where protest is failing. Well, I think the law is a legitimate part of an overall strategy that people are using now to try and stop these cutbacks. Another big case we've got coming up in the autumn for a full two-day hearing um, is challenging the decision on December the 9th to enable, uh, to allow universities to um, raise tuition fees um, to, to up to £9,000. So that's another big case. And arguably, tuition fees is the central plank in this government's policy, which we see as moving our higher education system to one based on elitism and wealth. And that's a very important challenge as well. Do you think there are other areas that you might similarly challenge? Well, there are a huge um, number of areas out there. And with local authorities being reined back, um, there's been a big decision in Birmingham recently where Birmingham City Council got the law wrong. Um, I'm aware of a number of 
um, other lawyers in this field who are lining up potential challenges to government cutbacks and how they affect a range of disadvantaged groups, you know, for example, um, battered wives refuge and, and the like, or specialist services for children with Down syndrome. There, is a, there are a range of, of issues out there. And I think the courts are going to see more and more challenges through judicial review to how these cuts affect um, the more disadvantaged, the more, more vulnerable members of our society. Doesn't this go to the heart of who runs Britain, though? I mean, the, the government would say, we have been elected, we have a democratic majority, and, and we are doing our, our job deciding where the priorities are, deciding what must go. And, and it's just lawyers and judges who are getting in the way and trying to play God here. Well, that's just not the way it works. We've got an unwritten constitution. And at the heart of that unwritten constitution is judicial review, which is meant to act as a check on what would otherwise be unfettered power of the executive. You cannot have central and local government able to act outside the law without judicial scrutiny. That's, that's a central plank of our democracy, and it's, uh, it's something that needs to be valued uh, and not denigrated.